Welcome back to the East Kentucky Expo Center. Larry Cecil, Charlie Pinson, and Wayne Fugit bringing you all the action here. Get ready for game number two. And this is one of those marquee matchups here tonight. It's Pikeville and Johnson Central on the girls' side. And Larry, you know, Pikeville has been playing well down the stretch. Uh, they shoot 45% from the field, 34% behind the three-point line, and 65 from the free throw line. They come in with a record of 20 and 8, and they're the runner-up in the uh, 59th district, but they gave Shelby Valley all they wanted uh, on championship night. Well, and uh, also uh, during the regular season, they defeated Shelby Valley, uh, I think, by six points down on their home floor. So, uh, and, uh, you know, they, they can play with, if I'm not mistaken, they went down to Johnson Central and played uh, the girls down there and end up only losing by seven points. And it was uh, close right up uh, maybe a minute or minute and a half the game a two or three point game. So uh, that was on Johnson Central's home floor. Right. Uh, so they, you know, that in their own mind, you know, that, that uh, tells them, you know, that they can play with Johnson Central. Johnson Central comes in tonight's game 26 and six on the season. As you said, they was the champions down in the 57th district and they shoot 45% from the field, 32% from three point line and 66% from the uh, free throw line. Their two leading scorers is uh, Allie May with uh, 15 points a game, 15.1, and Lauren Preston, and she also scored 15.1 points a game. Only two players that they've got in double figures. Uh, they like to get up and down the floor and, and uh, uh, play a, uh, uh, a lot of uh, pressure defense and uh, uh, looking at field goals attempted during the regular season. Uh, Lauren, uh, Pre uh, Lauren Preston tempted 170 field goals in the regular season, uh, and that's by far the uh, most, so uh, she is their uh, go-to player. Well, you know, you look down at Pikeville's roster, they don't, they've only got one player in double figures, but they got a couple hovering around it. Uh, leading scorer, Savannah Nunemaker with 11.9, um, and let's see, 9.6 for Grace Bartley and 9.1 for Leslie Stewart. Olivia Gerhardt in with 6.5 and Rachel Blackburn, the other starter, 2.9, but she's kind of their defensive stopper out there for them. Uh, Grace Bartley, though, has shot a bunch of baskets, 223 attempts, 257 for Savannah Nunemaker, and those are by far the two that have shot the most. And both of them, you know, Nunemaker shooting 69% or I mean, sorry, 41% from the floor. And Leslie Stewart's only shot 151, but she's 69% from the field. Grace Bartley at 40%. And I tell you what, they've got a pretty, they're pretty efficient. That's one of the things you can say for them. You can, you're right. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, as we said, you know, Johnson Central likes to uh, get a lot of pressure and stuff, but they also uh, shoot the, uh, three-point uh, basket. Uh, they attempted 434 three-point baskets during the regular season. Allie May averaged 40% uh, from three-point line. Then they've got 32% for Atlanta Castle, Casey Blair with 30%, and also Lauren Preston with 33%. So, you know, they, they've got some shooters that can shoot it from outside. They can take it to the bucket and uh, shoot good from a free throw. So yeah. uh, look for this to be a uh, a uh, outstanding uh, opening round tournament game. You know, Pike will only shot, th they've shot 308 three-pointers and they made 106 of them. Bartley shot more than anybody else as she shot 82, no, Nunemaker shot 110. Welcome to the East Kentucky Expo Center for the girls 15th region basketball tournament hosted by the 60th district under the title sponsorship of Community Trust Bank. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups for our second game. Representing the guests on the scoreboard, the runners up of the 59th district coming into tonight's contest with a record of 20 wins and eight losses, the Pikeville Lady Panthers. <laughs> starting at forward, number one, Rachel Blackburn. At guard, number two, Savannah Nunemaker. At guard, number 11, Grace Bartley. At guard, number 23, Olivia Gearhart. And at forward, number 22, Leslie Stewart, the Lady Panthers. 
Pikeville is led by head coach Christy Orem. And Pike left Representing the home team on the scoreboard, the champions of the 57th district coming into tonight's game with a record of 26 wins and six losses, the Johnson Central Lady Eagles. Starting at forward, number zero, Lauren Preston. At guard, number four, Lauren Salyer. At forward, number five, Elena Castle. At guard, number 24, Allie May. And at center, number 22, Cheyenne Ross, the Lady Eagles. Johnson Central is led by head coach Darren Rice. And that's your starting lineup. Cheyenne Ross wearing number 22 instead of 30 right now. So we had one number change. And we're ready, about ready to get this one underway. Like I say, these two teams played twice in the regular season, both of them under 10 point wins, I think, for Johnson Central. But that, you know, Pike or Pike will knows they can hang around with them though. Yes. And as you said, Pikeville playing some of their best basketball here down the stretch, and that's that's when you want to play the best. You know, they've got a, an advantage inside. Leslie Stewart, the tallest girl on the floor out there tonight, and she can put it in the basket at a, almost a 70% clip in the, in the paint. And it'll be controlled by Pikeville, and Gearhart will bring it up the floor. Pikeville wearing the all black here tonight or maybe a dark maroon, I'm not sure. I think it's black. I think it's black, yes. Pikeville working it around outside. Get it back out top now to Nunamaker. Nunamaker with it out top of the key, gives it back to Gearhart. A lot of defense being played by Johnson Central. There's Bartley, Blackburn again with it out top. Over to Gearhart, Pikeville being very patient. Try to go down inside to Stewart, and it's knocked away. He said it went off the hand to Stewart. So the first turnover will belong to the Lady Panthers. And it'll be Lauren Preston bringing it up the floor. For Johnson Central out top. Johnson Central very patient. And in the corner, there's a three. And that's good. That's Allie May. She shoots 40% from out there. And I think she's, she's one of their leading scorers. Into the front court, double team on Pikeville. We get it back to Gearhart. She has it knocked away. And here comes Lauren Preston the other way. Blackburn gets in there and harasses her into the miss, and it'll be knocked out of bounds. It'll go back to Pikeville. Well, that's good uh, defense by Rachel Blackburn by hustling back, and because uh, when uh, Lauren Preston broke free, uh, she was out in front. Yep. A little full court pressure by Johnson Central. Pikeville beats it, and Blackburn driving to the basket, throws it up no good. Rebound comes off to Ross for Johnson Central. And Allie May will bring it up the floor. May out front. A little bit of a moving pick there. May just takes it to the basket. No good. Rebound comes off to Bartley. And here comes Pikeville. They're trying to push it back up the floor. Gearhart brings it into the front court. Brings it over to the right side. Gets it over now to Nunamaker. Back to Gearhart. Out top to Blackburn with it. They try to go down underneath. Stewart puts it on the floor. Puts it up good and one. And that's. That's where they can hurt uh, Johnson Central, as you said, Charlie. And it's three to two right now. Johnson Central with the lead, and Pikeville can tie it up with this free throw. 6-11 to go here in the first quarter. And it's no good. Rebound comes off to Lauren Preston. Into the front court, Lauren Sayer with it. Back to Preston. There's a steal by Gearhart, and she's going to take it all the way to the basket and has it blocked, but it'll go back to Pikeville as May carried it out of bounds. That's good hustle to get back that time uh, by Allie May. Pikeville have it on the baseline, 5.56 to go here in the first, first quarter. Tied up. No, it's a one-point lead. I'm sorry. There's a three by Nunamaker. No. Rebound comes off to Castle. Elena Castle, she'll bring it into the front court. And Johnson Central restart the offense. Back out to Salyer. Over to May, I believe. 
Oh, that was to uh, Castle. Can't see down on that side. Go underneath, and we'll have a foul on the floor. And that foul is going to go against number one, pick number, number 11, 11, Grace Bartley. Okay, Grace Bartley. Johnson Center with it out front. They go in the paint, and they'll kick it back out top to Ross. They go down inside, and it's knocked away by Gearhart out of bounds. Olivia Gearhart playing some good uh, defense right now on Allie May. She's got a yep, tough matchup. That's a tough matchup here, right? Back out top to Ross, and now to Lauren Sawyer, or Lauren Preston. Preston drives the baseline, just takes it down in. Ooh. Thought Stewart had a good block. Yeah, it looked like an awful good block. On it. They might have got her as uh, she brought her arm down or something, but it, it looked like it was all ball. It looked all top. ball here. You're right. That's yeah. going to be her first team's second. Preston at the free throw line makes the first one. And it's 4-2 to two now. Johnson Central, 5-13 to go here in the half or in the quarter. Being a defensive struggle so far. Yes, sir. Makes them both. And it's 5-2. Here comes Nunamaker bringing it up the floor now for Pike. Well, Nunamaker going to take it all the way to the rack, and she gets fouled. And I think that foul is going to get called on Lauren Salyer. Yep. That's her first, and Johnson Central's second. Kirsten Cole getting set to check in for Pike. Well, 5.06 left first quarter as free throw Three. rolls in. Nunamaker bounces it in. 5-3, to three, but both teams uh, with only one field goal so far. Been, like I say, been a lot of defense played out here by both sides. Second one's good, and it's a one-point ball game, 5-4. Five, Five minutes to go here in this first quarter. Sager into the front court over to May, or Castle. Castle has it tipped out of bounds by Nunamaker. Both teams very active with their hands and their feet right now on the defensive end. Pikeville in a man-to-man -man defense. Sire with it in the backcourt. Walks it across the timeline, being very deliberate this time. She will take it into the rack herself. A little hook shot up, no good. Rebound and a foul as going back up with it was Elena Castle. I think they're going to get uh, Nunamaker with the foul. Her first team's third. Now, all the fouls right now, Charlie, seem to be putting somebody at the line. Yeah, we've seen a lot of free throws. <laughs> Castle at the free throw line, shooting two. Makes the first one. They have been very efficient from the line, haven't they? They have. Uh, well, they, Four shoot, out of they shoot 65% okay. for the season. That's a pretty good uh, percentage. And the reason that Castle's at the line, she just outworked two Pikeville players right. on their rebound. Miss the second one. Blackburn comes away with the rebound for Pikeville. And it'll be Preston knocking it out, of, or Salyer knocking it out of bounds. It'll be Pikeville basketball. Grace Bartley set to throw it in bounds. Gets it into Gearhart. And May on her. They're going to try to double team her in the backcourt. And she works her way out of it into the front court, gets it over to Blackburn. Blackburn shot blocked by Lauren Salyer. Well, that's two blocks that uh, Johnson Central's got by Pikeville going to the bucket on layup. So uh, look for Pikeville to start using that ball fake a little bit. Yep. Because they've had, like I say, open looks. They've just been giving up the timing, haven't they? Three straight away. Good by Newenmaker. 7-6. Pikeville now with the lead. First lead of the night. 4.15 to play here in the first quarter. They go try to go down inside. Preston shot no good. Fight for it. And Grace, Grace Bartley, Bartley has it. And we'll get a foul. Yeah. That's number zero, Lauren Preston. Third team foul, her first. Hannah Fitch checking in for Johnson Central, number 44. Bartley will give it back to Nunamaker. She'll bring it up the floor. 
And there's going to be a back tip. Fitch, and she puts it in. Nunamaker tried to run by her. Well, she reached out and tipped the ball away, and uh, Nunamaker tripped over. Uh, Fightville coach was wanting a foul caught on that, didn't get it. Nunamaker again, straight away, three, in and out. Rebound comes off to May, and she'll push it up the floor quickly to Salyer. Shot up, no good. Rebound comes off to Bartley. Here comes Pikeville back the other way. Nunamaker, and she's going to be fouled. And that's going to be on Lauren Salyer, I believe. That's her second. And team's fourth. Stewart coming back in for Pikeville and number 10. Edmonds, number five. Number 10 is uh, Styles. Or is that right? Or is that Sites? Sites. Sites. Pikeville with it. Gearhart with the drive, floater, no. Fight for it, rebound, comes up, put back up. Please, it's Gearhart again. It was. Put back up again by Pikeville, and we'll have a foul this time. And it's going to be called on the Lady Panthers. Bartley. Bartley, her second. Her second. Team's fourth. And number 12 for Pikeville, that's Kel uh, Kelsey Joe Tackett coming in, and also number 12, Ashley Belcher for Johnson Central. So we've got two 12s coming in. Yep. 8-7 lead, Johnson Central. They've got the basketball. And Gearhart with a – I mean, Edmonds with a steal. Edmonds spins, takes it to the basket, lays it up. Good and one. Jaden Edmonds coming in with a big steal. So Sites picks up her first foul, team's fifth. Sight bill back in front by one, and if Edmonds can make it, no good. Nope. That would have been their biggest lead. Yep, rebound Fitch, and she'll bring it all the way down. Dawson sits her with it in the front court. There's Allie May. She takes it baseline, works her way in, lays it up, missed it. Rebound comes off to Leslie Stewart, and here comes Pikeville back the other way. Gearhart into the front court, and it'll be knocked out of bounds by Hannah Fitch. Hey, Fitch, uh, get up and down the floor. Yes, she can. Number zero, Lauren Preston checking back in. Yeah, it'll be a revolving door in and out for Johnson Central. That's the way they play. They play 10 or 12 players. Gearhart with it. Double team, she tries to go, has it knocked away, goes back and gets it. And we're going to have a jump ball call. There goes Johnson, Johnson Central. Johnson Central, yep. Uh, Olivia Gearhart got uh, double teamed. Uh, none of her teammates coming to her to help her, and she just tried to dribble through the double team, and they tied her up. Yep. Allie right. May walking it up the floor. Got to come give some help. You got to help, you're right. Allie May on the drive, missed it. Rebound will go out of bounds. It'll stay with Johnson Central. And it's a war right now in there. And it'll be Johnson Central throwing out top to, Pre to uh, Preston. Drive shot up and good. Under a lot of pressure. Johnson Central retakes the lead 10 to 9. Gearhart in the front court with it. Gives it back to Edmonds. And she walked with it. Yep. Yeah. Yes, she did. Nunamaker and number uh, 40, that is uh, for Pikeville. That's, uh, who is 40? 40 for Pikeville? Yep. Uh, That's Cole, isn't it? They yeah, Kirsten Cole evidently wearing 40 tonight. Out front with it is Fitch. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Pikeville. Yeah, uh, the roster that they gave us. Yeah, uh, normally she's 33. Yeah, you know, right. Kirsten Cole was 33. She's wearing 40 tonight. Missed that one. Sorry about that. I just. Well, you know, uh, they the program that There's they gave us steal. had a number on it. There's the drive and an easy basket. 
for Ashley Belcher. 12-9, Johnson Central. Cole with it, puts it on the floor, takes it to the rack, shot up good and one. And that'll be a foul on Fitch, I think, isn't it? I think that's who they're going to get. 44, you're right, that's her second. No, excuse me, that's her first. Team sixth, but Chris, uh, Kirsten Cole will be trying to complete the three-point play, and if she does, we'll have it tied up. Nunemaker checks back into the ball game and also checking in. Second shot up, no good, is, um, where's she at? Wilkerson. Allie May kicks it back. Might have got by with a walker. Fight was missed her last two free throws. Johnson Central has been hitting her, so. Preston on the drive, shot up, no. Rebound taken away, put back up, no. And this time it'll come down to Kirsten Cole and Pike will bring it up the floor. Nunemaker bringing it up over the timeline. Fires it over to Kelsey Joe Tackett. They go down inside, and Wilkerson looks up the loose ball. Inside Tackett, turn around, no. Rebound comes off to Belcher for Johnson Central. And all the Johnson Central girls can bring the ball up the floor. I yes, just noticed that. Shot up, good, and one for Lauren Preston. Yes, they can all handle it, and, and they like to pay, uh, play that fast-paced game, and quick as they come off the – uh, with the rebound, they put it on the floor yep. and try to get it up the, up into their end. You're right. Free throw, no good. Rebound comes off to Nunemaker. Nunemaker pushing it up the floor now for Pikeville. Takes it all the way down, missed the layup. And Kirsten Cole going to be called for over the back. Yeah. And I mean, can't, can't fold her for no, the no. effort. No, but it was you know easy, it was an easy call. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, uh, I mean, the foul was there, but like I said, you can't fault them no. for their effort because they've been really letting them battle and they play had. under the board. You're right. So she was just in there banging and got caught on that one. Two, two, one. Press now by Pikeville. First time we've seen yep. this, and that slows Johnson Central down a little bit. Into the front court, Allie May. There's a steal. And losing it out of bounds is Kirsten Cole. She just took it away from Preston, though. She did. She held her ground and uh, didn't go for that crossover ball fake and tipped it out of bounds, nearly come up with the steal. Sites checking back in for Johnson Central. Gearhart back in for Pike Pikeville. Yes. Nunamaker will get a rest. Only five seconds left. And Preston shot up no good. Rebound fought for and... Uh, we're going to get a foul. Jump, oh, jump ball. No, no foul. 14-11, Johnson Central at the end of one. We'll be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to the Expo Center. We're ready for second quarter action in tonight's second game. Johnson Central and Pikeville. Johnson Central holds a 14-11 lead, Charlie, but both teams led for uh, different times here in the uh, first quarter. We'll get some stats, see how many uh, ties and right. lead changes we had, but they were several. We're well, just looking down at uh, the some of the records here. Do you know that uh, Coach Darren Rice has been in this position before? He's won two regional titles, been runner-up twice at two different schools. Nunemaker driving into the paint, kicks it back out. Tackett's three is good. Kelsey Joe Tackett knocking the three down. And we're tied again. Johnson Central trying to get it down into Sire or to uh, Preston. One of those Lawrence. There's a drive shot, no good by Belcher. And we're going to have a foul. And it's going to be on Nunamaker for the hold. That's Nunamaker second, and that's seven team foul, so it'll be the one and one. One and one, yep. Johnson Central with 16 fouls, so we'll probably see a whole lot of foul shots shot here before the half. Oh, I'm sure. 7.30 to go in the half. And Ross will be at the free throw line shooting one and one. Cheyenne Ross taking her time. First one is no good. And rebound comes off to Belcher, and Gearhart takes it away from, wow, 
No, Gearhart takes it away, and then they're going to call the foul well, okay. on uh, Belcher. Okay, I'm going to call it on her. Yeah. That's a beautiful steal. All right, yeah, she just went in and took it away from her, and Belcher reached out and grabbed her, and that's 17 fouls now for Johnson Central, so Olivia Gearhart will be at the line shooting to one and one. So Gearhart at the line to shoot one plus one. She's not scored yet in the ball game. Puts the first one up. It rolls in and out. Johnson Central rebound May pushes it up the floor. Allie May heading right for the basket and lost it out of bounds. And another turnover, Johnson Central. Uh, Pikeville with six turnovers and Johnson Central with three. That was in the first quarter. Taggett bringing it up the floor now for Pikeville. Nice little behind the back dribble yes, by Taggett. Was. Well, she's left-handed. They don't realize that sometimes. Drive by Taggett, no good. Rebound, Cole. She goes in, just wades in there, grabs it, puts it in the basket. Well, the same thing she got called over the back for the other time. She just went between the two players and took it away from them this time. And might have got by with a walk there. I might have. Might have. Sammy Seitz gets the basket. It is 16-16, 6.45 to play. Here in the first half, Tackett gets it to Cole. They'll work it around down in the corner. There's Bartley. Tackett with it out front. Kelsey Joe Tackett with the runner. Falls. Boy, I tell you, got some nice English on that one, and Pikeville retakes the lead now. Back the other end, shot up and good by Semi Sites. She's got four points in the last two possessions. And that's what they can do to you. You, you you're celebrating for scoring on the other end, and they, they'll they be shooting Wilkerson on the Wilkerson all end. the way, coast to coast, and the foul. And that foul's going to go against uh, Lauren Preston. Her second. 18 fouls. Yep. It'll be a uh, one free throw. We've got Jaden Edmonds back in the lineup, along with uh, Leslie Stewart. And it looks like more Pikeville. Blackburn set to check in for Wilkerson as she makes this free throw. Right. Wilkerson takes her time. Free throw bounces off. Rebound comes off to Ross. And here comes Johnson Central back the other way, trailing by two. Allie May drives in, puts a runner up. No, but she's fouled. That's going to go against Stewart. And it'll be one or be two shots, I think, won't it? Yeah, yeah, giving her two. She's going to get two anyway. She nails the first one. Right. She's an excellent free throw shooter, Allie May is. Blackburn and Cole checking back in for Pikeville. Makes both of them. And we're tied at 20 with 5.58 to go in the half. 80% free throw shooter on the season. That's pretty good in high school. <laughs> it is. Out front, they go to Gearhart. Back he goes to Tackett. Tackett back over to Gearhart. Michael being very patient. They go into Cole, and it's nearly stolen, but Jaden Edmonds comes in and gets it. Tackett back to Gearhart. Tackett calling for it in the corner. Gearhart with the runner, no. Rebound Blackburn. And she's fouled. And she then she falls over top of Gearhart, who's on the floor. And also, uh, Atlanta Castle was on the floor, too, so there's a lot of bodies on the floor. And they're going to give her two shots. That foul was against Atlanta Castle number five. That's her second. Team, uh, nine team fouls now for Johnson Central. Free throw's good. 21-20. So, so it'll be the double bonus for Pikeville, the last 5-22 in the half. Pikeville has got eight team fouls. Ashley Belcher checking back in now for Johnson Central. Free throw, Blackburn, good. Well, you, can say one, you can say one thing, Charlie, so far in this game and the first game, the fans have got their money. Yes, worth. sir. Been knocked down drag outs here, hasn't it? And we, we thought uh, 
it's going to be like his girls and boys this year pretty well. Uh, even uh, the 15th region on both of them. Yep. That's a, and we got a moving pick. Yeah. Thought Good. they missed that one the last time that yeah. uh, Allie May drove the, down the, the Looks lane. Like they were setting up that pick and roll, and she rolled before the pick. Yeah. Or during the pick, I guess I should say. Of course, that's uh, offensive foul, so be no free throws. But that is 10 team foul, so fight will be in the double bonus from here on out. And Gearhart fouled out there quickly by uh, Sites. That's her first. Or a second now. They got to uh, change the board second. So Gearhart will go back to the free throw line. Missed her only attempt, but this will be, as you said, Charlie, too. Takes her time with it. Puts the first one up. It stays in. Boy, took a trip a couple times. Don't matter how many trips it takes as long as it goes down. As long as it goes down. I think that's our largest lead, isn't it, by three? I think you're right. Maybe the largest lead for either team. That's the largest lead by either team, yep. four points. Johnson Central had a 3-0 read yeah. Yeah, in the first half when they hit that three. And Johnson Central working around out front. Sites gets it back out to Ross. Back to Sites. Sites on to Edmonds over there. And Edmonds doing a good job not letting her drive to the basket. Yes, she is. And it'll be knocked out of bounds by Tackett. And, Charlie, you want to see a battle down inside, Fitch and uh, Rachel Blackburn. Oh, yeah. There's the drive by Allie May up. No, but she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, Ed, Edmonds got caught a little bit on that screen at the top of the circle, and nobody uh, was there to uh, help out, and she had to foul her. Well, Allie May, once she got her arm and ball in front of her, she kind of got her on her hip and just took it to the basket. She didn't have any choice but foul her. Right. So she gets to the free throw line where she can do some damage. Yep. Well, just like I said, she's shooting 80% from the free throw line for the year. And uh, that is uh, 144 attempts and shooting 80%. Five will bring it up the floor. Tack it. Back to Gearhart now. Gearhart in the front court. Over to Tack it. Back to Gearhart. 418 to play here in the half. 24-22, Pikeville with the lead. Gearhart with it again out front. And they're backing back off a little bit. Okay, attack it, gets it over to Blackburn. Gearhart kind of packing that paint on a little bit here, looks like. They are. Kelsey Joe Tackett with the drive and a basket. Boy, she's played a heck of a first half, hasn't she? She has. Allie May taking it down inside. Or not. Yep. Yeah. Allie May. Yeah, she's fouled again. She's just schooling the freshman right now. I think Edmund's just a freshman, right? I think so. We'll tell you here in a second. That's her second. She is, you're correct. Well, Pikeville right now on the floor has only got one senior. That's Rachel Blackburn. The the other four players are either freshmen and sophomores. That's pretty well what yep. their team, uh, what it look like next year maybe. You're right. 26-23, make it 26-24 now as she makes the free throws. 3.48 to play in the half. Pike will holding on to a two-point advantage. Gearhart into the front court with it. Over to Tackett. Back to Gearhart. Floater over to Blackburn. Yeah, that's, that's pass. a dangerous pass. You're right. Edmonds back to Tackett. Tackett a three. It's no good. Gearhart hustling after it. Boy, got a hand on it. Didn't get the rebound, but I don't know how she got a hand on it laying on the floor like that. And Ross shot and one as Tacky will pick up the foul. That's Fitch. Fitch, Fitch shot. my bad. Yeah. Well, now it was a battle all the way up the floor every time whoever had the ball was battling on that one, and uh, Fitch just ends up with it under the bucket. And the free throw's good. Johnson Central shot well from the free throw line. And they've been there a lot of times, too. 27-26. Johnson Central back on top by one. 
Back and forth. Well, like I say, three points been the largest lead of the half, isn't it? Four. Four, yeah. That's the largest lead of the game. Game, well. Yeah. Johnson Central's largest lead was three, and Pikeville's had a lead of four. And Pikeville, uh, they're just going to stand out there and hold it. They got the uh, two-point or the one-point lead. No, they're down one. Is this clock down here, says? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, uh, they uh, she had a three-point play uh, right. uh, on that last Darren Rice getting a drink of water, said, I'm in no hurry to come out. You don't want to dribble the time? Wait, we'll take it. Him and the officials having a conversation. He's wanting to know if they had to attack. Uh, there ain't no rule in high school that you nope. have to attack any certain time. Long time to hold the ball, though. Well, it's not if uh, the defense is going to sit back in a 1-3 zone and watch you dribble it. Well, I guess that's true. I was setting a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Tackett standing out there dribbling. Well, and uh, Pikeville buying a little time, you know, uh, for some of their starters that's got foul trouble and sitting on the bench right now. And Tackett's fouled. And that'll be on oh, number, Ross. number 22. Yep. That's Ross. I thought it was going to be on Fitch. I did, too. Of course, they was uh, they had a double team, so this will be the double bonus by Kelty Joe, and she knocks the first one in. We're tied at 27. Lexi Wilkerson checking in. Tied at 27. Minute 47 to play here in the half. She misses the second one. Rebound comes off to Fitch, and Allie May bringing it up the floor. May with it out front. Your hard on her. She'll back back out. Minute 33 to go in the half. Fitch gets it back. And they go back in the corner. Fitch for three. It's good. Well, I tell you, she's uh, working the inside uh, uh, strong. And now she steps out and knocks a three-pointer down. That's, that's tough to go yep. to a player like that. 30-27, three-point advantage now, Central. 105 to play, and maybe they're going to play for the last shot down by three. Charlie, during the regular season, she uh, attempted 13 threes, made two. And out front, still dribbling. Trying to get their offense set the way she wants it. Tackett will come back to the near side. Kelsey Joe Tackett will stand out front and dribble it, wait on the defense to come after, talking to the coach. Everybody getting a little bit of a breather here. 24 seconds. Eighteen, and now anyway he comes out. There's a three by Tackett. Good, and we're tied at 30. With 10 seconds to play. That's a pretty good strategy, uh, yep. Charlie, look like. Allie May on the drive, missed it. Rebound Johnson Central, loose ball, shot up, and good. Did it count? Yes, it did. And who who was that? Over here? I think that was Ross. Was it Ross? Yep. Okay. At the end of the first half, Johnson Central 32, Pikeville 30. It's a shame we've got to take a break, but we'll be back in just a moment on the Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back to the East Kentucky Expo Center, 32-30 here at the half. Johnson Central with a last second shot to take the lead, and it should have ended that way because that's the way this game has been played. That's the way it's played. Uh, Johnson Central's largest lead uh, in the game was by three points, and that was the three-pointer uh, that they made was 7-14 uh, in the first half, first bucket of the game, and Pikeville had a four-point lead in the second quarter at the uh, 4.59 mark. Had seven times the score was uh, tied and six lead changes, so that's the way it was the first half. Now for some uh, individual stats, uh, Pikeville were led in scoring by Kelsey Joe Tackett with 11 points. She is two or three from the three-point line. 
Two points for Rachel Blackburn, Savannah Noonemaker with five, two points for Leslie Stewart and Olivia Gearhart. Also, uh, Jaden Edmonds with two points, uh, Alexis uh, Wilkerson also with two points and four for Kirsten Cole. Fightville was 10 of 24 from the field for 41%, three of six from three point line for six or for 50%, and seven of 13 from the foul line for 53%. They had 14 rebounds, had uh, three assists, six turnovers, one block, and three steals. For Johnson Central, uh, they were led in scoring by Allie May with nine, had six points by Lauren Preston. Uh, Lauren uh, Salyer uh, didn't score, one point for Atlanta Castle, two points for Cheyenne Ross, and also two points for Ashley Belcher. Uh, Sammy Seitz had four points and eight points for Hannah Fitch. Johnson Central was 20 of, uh, 10 of 22 from the field for 45%. Two of two from three-point line, 10 of 13 from the uh, foul line. They had 21 rebounds. They uh, beat Pipeville by seven on the boards. They had six offensive and 15 defensive rebounds. They had five assists, two blocks, six turnovers, and four steals. Fast break po uh, points, Johnson Central, eight to four. Uh, nine to six in favor of Johnson Central. Points off turnover, points in the paint, 14-10 for Johnson Central, and Second chance points, five to four, Johnson Central. So it's 32-30 at the half. And we send it back to the station. Be back shortly for the start of the second half. This has been your halftime report on the Intermountain Sports. And we're back at the Expo Center, ready for second half action between Pikeville and Johnson Central. This is the second game of the night's opening round. In the night's first game, Pike Central come from behind in the fourth quarter to come away with a 57-50 win over Betsy Lane, and they're waiting in the wings to uh, meet the winner of uh, this game that we've got going on right now, Charlie, and I'm telling you, uh, so far, uh, one and a half games into this tournament, the fans has uh, got their money's worth and uh, shouldn't be disappointed. Of course, right. I know when your team loses, you're a little disappointed, but... Uh, but it's been a great uh, basketball action so far. Oh, it's been a great atmosphere. It's, it's a good crowd here tonight as well. It is. And Johnson Central will have it to start the second half. And here we go. 32-30, Johnson Central. They've got the basketball. And let's, let's see, <coughs> see if the competitiveness continues. Oh, I guarantee it. Might even pick up just yep. there. Out front with it, Sawyer. Go down to Preston. Preston, with, no, that's uh, Castle with a runner, no good. He'll go out of bounds back to Allen, or to Johnson Central. And it'll be Castle throwing it in bounds. Looking, and they get it in barely. Castle with a little loop around, wants to put it up. Over. Oh, nice block by Stewart, takes them all away. Gets it out front quickly. Nunamaker, if you don't stop her, she'll... Pull up and showed it. And, and missed she did. It. Yep. Allie May with the rebound, and she'll take it all the way to the rack if you don't get in her way. And she does. And she's fouled. That's going to be three on Stewart. <laughs> she can uh, do some damage against Johnson Central on the inside, but Johnson Central knows that. And when she's in the game, they're just taking it straight to her every chance they get. Well, Johnson Central wants to run the floor with her in the floor on the field on the floor. Right. Because you know, I think they they feel like they've got an advantage. Allie May's free throw is good. She'll have one more. Well, Johnson Central likes to run the floor no matter if it's Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Makes them both. 34-30. Johnson Central now is Kirsten Cole checks back in. And Allie May, 80% free throw shooter on the season, eight of eight tonight. Into the front court with a gearhart. Top of the key, over to Bartley with it now. Back out top to Blackburn, back to Gearhart again. Gearhart looking inside, gets it into Cole. Kirsten Cole turns, and that's going to be a foul on Johnson Central's Ross. Yeah, since she got her with the body, pushed her as she tried to make her move. That's her second. Team's first here in the second half. By with it on the baseline. Throw it over top, Nunamaker, she'll set up for a three. Good. It's good. 
Tell it when you lift yep. her hand. We was looking right down the old gun barrel on that one. And she pulled the trigger. She did. 34-33, one-point ball game. Johnson Central back out to Sawyer. May in the corner. Nice hands by Kirsten Cole. Knocks it away. You can hear leather slap all the way up here. Yes, you could. And making it back out top now to Sawyer. Ross tries to set the pick. Sawyer on the drive. Goes right by Cole. Missed it. Kirsten Cole with the rebound, though. Here comes Pikeville. Lunamaker. She'll take it all the way to the rack. If you give her room, she does and gets Passes it. In. And a great job that time by Nuna Maker as she uh, used her body to uh, defend the defender away from the ball. Turn around in the paint and good by Lauren Preston. And one. And Kirsten Coe, I think, is going to pick that one up. That'll be her second. So that's five fouls on the post now. Well, they're. There will be some players leaving this game for it's over with oh, on yeah. both sides. Oh, yeah. The way the whistle's blowing right now. And they're not picking uh, no, not, nope. Uh, nope. No, nothing uh, ticky-tack. Nope. <laughs> they're, call, they're calling them in. They're calling them. I think they're calling a good game. They are. It's just two very physical teams here tonight. They're letting them play as much as they can. Right. Bartley with it out top. Blackburn. Maxie back out over to Nunamaker. Nunamaker will burst. A little fade away is no good. Rebound. Oh, out front. Nice pass. Beautiful in. pass up and front. And Preston with the layup. And it's 37 or 38 35. Back to three point lead now for Johnson Central. Yeah, Pipe Bill got caught with all five players free throw line down to the baseline and uh, just wasn't in position to defend the run out. Bartley step back three is short. Rebound comes off to Ross. And here comes Preston pushing it up the floor now for the Eagles. Over in the corner, Allie May sets for a three. No. Rebound being fought for. Nunamaker comes out of the spray with it. And you had the right word on that. Fought for it. Yeah. Nunamaker with over on the right side. Blackburn back to Gearhart now. Gearhart over on the left side with it. Gearhart swings it into the paint. And she's going to call a walk. Yeah, thought she got a little bump going across that lane there uh, from uh, Lauren Preston, but uh, nothing was called. And then she got down inside, got trapped. Yeah, you got to you gotta get fouled pretty good to get a call. You do. You do. Out front, top of the key with it. Driving inside, and Kirsten Cole gets the ball, and she gets fouled, I think. Or no, they're going to call it on her. They're going to call the foul on uh, Noodlemaker on the push. Okay. <laughs> That's her third. Lauren Preston is uh, holding her back. Our new to make her uh, is trying to block out and got a, a pretty good shot in on her. So uh, two of the starters now on the bench right now with three fouls yep. in Pikeville. Edmonds comes in. Allie May puts it on the floor, and she's fouled, and that's going to be on, maybe on Grace Bartley. No, it's going to be on Kirsten Cole. And that's her third. That's her third. And Allie May, 8 of 8 from the line tonight. Like you said, an 80% uh, free throw shooter on the season. Free throw's good. She's got 12 points right now, Charlie, and 9 of them coming from the foul line. Got one more coming her way here, 39-35, make it 40-35. That's the largest lead of the night at 5, isn't it? It is. Gearhart will bring it up the floor now for Pikeville. <coughs> Gearhart dribbling around, trying to get it in, and they throw it away. Stolen away by Salyer, and Salyer gives it up. Preston with the drive. No, rebound comes off to Bartley, and we're going to get a tie-up. And it'll go to Pikeville. We've got a... Timeout on the floor, 419 to play. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. And let's see. Both teams have played hard here. Johnson Central with the five-point lead, 40 to 35. 
You're right in these games tonight. Charlie's brought to us by Appalachian Wireless, Save a Lot, Community Trust Bank, Coalfields Telephone, Attorney John Earl Hunt, Intermountain Cable, Total Pharmacy, Microtech Security, Citizens Bank of Kentucky, Hall Funeral Home, and Howard Family Pharmacy. Appreciate those fine folks. 419 to go in the third quarter. It'll be uh, Pikeville ball here. And they'll have to bring it length of the court. Johnson Central not in the full court press right now. Tackett brings it into the front court. Puts it on the floor, gets it back over now to Edmonds. Edmonds on the drive with the runner, no, and we got a foul. Well, I tell you, a nice drive that time by Edmonds. Uh, the uh, Johnson Central defender heads out, uh, thought she was going to pass it uh, out to the baseline, and she took it straight to the bucket, drew the foul. Edmonds to the line to shoot two. First one rolls off. And that foul against uh, Lauren Preston, and that's her third, and she'll have to take a seat as 44 Fitch comes in for her. Edmonds back the line, only a freshman. Shot up, no good. Rebound comes off to uh, May Ross, I'm sorry. Pikeville missing their free throw opportunities. Johnson Central making theirs could be. Uh, end up being a big difference in this game. Allie May underneath, double team, Kirsten Cole with the block, loose ball, and we're gonna have a jump ball, I believe. And it's gonna go to Johnson Central. And it'll be Johnson Central with it on the baseline, trying to get it inbounds. Get it in and Fitch puts it in the basket. Yep. You break down and uh, end up with a three-foot shot off the yeah. uh, inbounds pass. It's uh, tough to defend. So 42-35 now. Tack it with it out front. And there's Edmonds. Edmonds kicks it in the corner. Bartley will put up a three. It's way off. I think that might have been partially blocked. It'll be out of bounds on Fitch. It'll stay with Pikeville. And Grace Bartley needs to get uh, on track a little bit on the offensive end. Only two uh, points. Only two points yep. tonight. And she is one of their main, if not the main, outside three-point threat. Tackett takes it into the paint, spins, and has it stolen away. And nearly stolen back by Edmonds. But Allie May with it, she's going to take it to the rack. And she's going to be fouled. And I think they'll call that on Bartley. And that's going right. to be her third. Five team fouls. So that's three starters with three fouls for Pikeville. And, an, and one of the uh, reserves, uh, Kirsten Cole, with three fouls. Allie May just missed a free throw. Hold the press. That's right. That's news. Makes the second. Well, she is 80% for uh, on the season, and she's only shooting 90 tonight with that miss, yeah. 9 of 10. Just a hair above her average. Tacky with it. Brings it around out front. Nice little turn. Cole is stolen away. Good anticipation by Cheyenne Ross. May will bring it into the front court. They're leading 43-35 with 2.35 to play here in the third. And that's uh, Castle with it. Picks up her dribble. Throws it back out top. That's Preston Sawyer with it. Sawyer with a little leaner goes. Well, I tell you, that's a tough shot. She took a pretty good bump from uh, Kirsten Cole and was able to uh, keep her balance and uh, put it up and in. Ten point lead now for yep. Johnson said. Cole puts it on the floor, takes it to the rack, lays it in. Stolen away by Nunamaker, who's back into the ball game. Edmonds down in the corner, wearing it back out top. And Bartley brings it top of the key back over to Tackett's three, in and out. Cole rebound in a basket. 
Houston Cole, 45-39. Patrol in that lane and comes up with the rebound. And they'll walk it into the front court now. Give it up out front to Ross. There's Fitch. Castle. And it'll be, they throw it away. Yeah. Wilkerson in the lineup for the Lady Panthers as Bartley will get a rest. Preston checking back in for Johnson Central. And Nunemaker will bring it up the floor. Minute 20 to play here in the first or third quarter, 45-39, Johnson Central. Out top with it, Nunemaker on the bounce. Back to Tackett. Tackett calling for the pick, goes the opposite way. And brings it back around and has it stolen away. Fitch taking it to the rack and one. Tackett got a little too fancy on that one. Charlie trying to go behind the back on the dribble and got her pocket pick. Yep. And that's going to be her second foul. Very frustrated young lady right now. Yeah. She's played a heck of a game. Had 11 she points has. first half. Had scored here in the second half. Fitch at the free throw line. And it's no good. Rebound Cole. Here comes Pike with 47-39, under a minute to go in the third. Nunemaker kicks it back out. There's Wilkerson's three is no good. Tacky gets the rebound, puts it up. Oh, it rolls out on her. She'll go to the line for two. Yep, she's fouled. Allie May, that's her first. She's just a smart player, isn't she? She is. You don't get in any foul trouble. Don't, don't run her mouth in. He just well, plays. We was talking a while ago about her uh, scoring her points and stuff. I was looking. Uh, she had uh, uh, 12 points, nine from the uh, foul line. She was only one of five from the field. That one was a three-point bucket. But she's off her game, so she's smart enough. She takes it to the bucket, gets fouled, goes right, to the foul line. Right. Taggett makes the first and misses the second. Rebound comes off to Preston. I'll bring it up the floor now. Sawyer gets it into the front court. There's May. <laughs> and not only that, she can act too. Well, not only that, the official can uh, put pretty, a pretty, pretty good show on too because he gave the walk signal, then he changed it and said it was on the floor a foul. Okay. I thought he was putting a clinic on there for yeah. a minute. <laughs> and that's going to be the one and one. And she'll be shooting two, won't she? No, one and one? one. Yeah, 17 fouls. I thought she was in action. Well, no, he, he, uh, when he caught the foul, when he initially caught the foul, he pointed. When, when he caught the foul, he initially pointed, uh, he would give a walk, and then he pointed on the floor before the shot. But then it was seven. Seven foul, team okay. foul, so I made it one and one. That's what I said. Put a clinic on. There man. you go. Confuse me. <laughs> New to make her with it. I can tell. Court. Yeah. 47 <laughs> 40. Pike will play for one here with 18 seconds. They've got the possession arrow in their favor to start the fourth quarter if they don't become nice up with Nice pass under up. to Wilkerson. She shoots it too hard, though. And it'll be Johnson Central Ball with eight seconds left. Oh, I thought that was tilt, but evidently not. Usually don't see uh, somebody shoot it over the backboard without point, it being tipped, yeah. Point blank. Ball, a jump ball, and it will go to Pikeville, and that's not what they not what they wanted to happen, was it? No. You got it with 1.1 second. You add the possession arrow in your favor to start the fourth quarter. You get a jump ball with 1.1 second left. Josh Sims is going to get it to start the fourth quarter. You're probably right. Tag it. We'll throw it in to Nunamaker. Nunamaker. Half court shot is short. So at the end of three, it's 47 40. Johnson Central on the Intermountain Sports Network. The Expo Center, 47 40. Johnson Central holding on to the lead here with one quarter left to go. And it's been a battle the whole night, Larry. 
It has been. Uh, Johnson Central got out to a 10-point lead about midway through that third quarter. Uh, Fightville had a little run, cut it to six, uh, stands at seven right now. So uh, they had some starters getting some foul trouble. Looks like uh, Stewart back into the lineup and Bartley's back on the floor. So uh, Johnson Central will have it starting this fourth quarter, Charlie. And it'll be Sawyer bringing it into the front court. Fish looked real like you're going to shoot from out there, didn't you? Yes, she did. Puts it on the floor, and she's going to be called for the walk. Trying to take it right at Stewart and get the foul, but she forgot to dribble. Yeah, and Johnson Central uh, was aware that Stewart's in the game because they spread the floor and give it to her and let her take it in yep. there against her. Tack it into the front court now for Pikeville. Gives it to Stewart. Back to Nunamaker now. Nunamaker out top. She'll back it out, back over to Tackett. Tackett a straightaway three is no good. Rebound picked up in there by Preston. She pushes it up the floor. Fires it over. Sights. And Fitch hadn't, hadn't fumbled. She had a layup, but yeah. Michael comes away with the rebound. Yeah. Nunamaker pushing it up the floor. She's going to take it all the way to the rack. No, but she'll go to the line. I look for her to kindly take over here in this fourth quarter a little bit. Yep. Only the fourth team foul, but that is the third foul on Lauren Salyer. I Like you say, I don't think a couple of them are going to make it through this one. Uh, for both sides. Oh, yeah. Olivia Gearhart back in for Fightville and also uh, Cheyenne Ross in for Johnson Central. Second free throw is good. 47-42. Fightville picking up with man to man, full yep. pressure. Allie May bringing it up the floor. Kicks it back out. Sight's going to take it in. And she walked before the foul, too. Yeah. They're trying real hard to get it, to take it to uh, Stewart, but they've been well, walked I, twice. I don't think that was a foul anyway, even if they hadn't called a walk. Stewart held her ground and sights uh, initiated the contact on that, so come out uh, better for Pikeville anyway by calling the travel. Right. Makes it no question then. That's it. Nunamaker and, out front. And that's 11 turnovers now for Johnson Central. Pikeville with 14. Stewart gives it up now to Nunamaker. Stewart trying to work her way down inside and just powers it in. Yeah. Well, that's what she can do for them. They get it inside to her. She's just not been able to stay on the floor because of foul trouble. And Brett Sager misses it on the layup. Here comes Nunamaker back the other way. She's going to take it all the way to the rack. Missed it. And we're going to have a... Jump ball. Jump ball and that'll go to Pikeville. Trailing official made the call, probably best thing for Pikeville. Well, I think he called the jump ball when Olivia reached in okay. because when uh, Grace Bartley reached in, she had over the arm. So we'll we'll say we'll leave it at that. that say works. that's what we got. They got now the ball anyway. Stewart and she's fouled. And that's going to be four on Lauren Preston. 6.04 to play, 47-44, and they can make it. She can cut it to uh, one. Fightville on a 4-0 run starting this fourth quarter. Johnson Central hasn't scored yet. Free throw's good. Fightville uh, struggled at the line tonight, Charlie. Uh, they're 8 of 17, 9 of 18 now with that one. Johnson Central's 15 of 22. Second one's good, and it's a one-point ball game, 47-46. 6.04 to play, and we're right back at it again. Yes, we are. Into the front court with it is Sire. Kicks it back to May. Allie May on the dribble. Ball fake, tries to go into the paint, loses her footing, and they throw it away. Yeah. Good double team that time as Stewart steps over, cut the baseline off, and... Olivia Gearhart come in from the backside and uh, double teamed her and 
Uh, Caused her to throw it away. I thought he was calling a 30 second time out there. He, he was. Is. I can say it kept going like this. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know what kind of, maybe that's a play. Maybe it's a 30 second play. It might, might be. <laughs> 47 46, 543 to play. Johnson Central clinging to a one point lead. At the end of the uh, third quarter, uh, Pikeville was uh, 14 of 36 for 28 or 38 percent. Johnson Central was 15 of 34 for 44 percent. And we're talking about uh, Allie May. Uh, Allie May, Charlie, has got uh, 14 points. She's 11 of 13 from the foul line, but she's only one of seven from the field, and that one basket is a three-pointer. So uh, she uh, her game, she's off her game a little bit shooting from the floor, but she's making up for it, as we said earlier, by taking the ball to the uh, bucket and uh, uh, drawing the foul and going to the foul line. Well, Wayne made a good point here just in my ear just a second ago. He said it. Since Stewart's come back into the ball game, the game has changed mainly because Johnson Central is trying to get her in foul trouble so hard they've got out of their offensive flow. Yeah, yeah, they they've concentrating on more and taking it in the uh, down against her. You're right, and in, uh, instead of working their offense, now Pikeville has really come out and played well here with their most of their starters back at all their starters back in well all but Tackett Tackett coming in and playing in that uh, of that fifth position. She's in for Rachel Blackburn right now. Yep. Pikeville uh, set up in a double low post on each uh, block. Now they move Stewart out on top. Noodlemaker just standing out at the jump circle, bouncing the ball. Now they'll come out, pick them up, go to Gearhart. She picks up her dribble, gives it over now to Bartley up top. Back to Noonamaker. Back to Bartley. They keep pushing Bartley farther and farther away from that three-point line. Don't well, they? They, they keep pushing Pikeville further away outside. Stewart trying to get down low, has it taken away, but they fall out of bounds with it. And that's what Pikeville's trying to do. They're moving Stewart out to the free throw line and uh, working it around out front. And then they're trying to get that pick and roll. They had her that time, but John Central stepped back in, double-teamed her, knocked the ball out. I think you spread it, just let her go one-on-one. -on -one. There's Gearhart with the drive and a basket, and Pikeville retakes the lead, 48-47. Olivia Gearhart got three on the screen at the top of the circle and puts her team back out on top. Sawyer into the front court. And she'll give it up to Ross out there. Castle looking, trying to get it down inside. They go over in the corner now. Go back inside to Castle. Sights, 10-footer, rolls off. Rebound, put back up, no good. And that will send Castle to the free throw line. Tackett, Kelsey Joe Tackett with the foul. That's her third. 18 fouls, but there will be two shots. Kelsey Joe Tackett picks up her, is that her second? Third. Third. Free throw, no good. Castle now one of three from the foul line. Fitch checking back into the ball game now for Johnson Central. But, uh, and, uh, Charlie Pipeboy was down 10 in that third quarter and missed, them both. missed both free throws. They've come back uh, from 10 down and uh, taken a one point lead, so they've outscored Johnson Central 11 points since midway in the third quarter. Nunamaker with the ball, Pipeboy with a one point lead, four minutes to go. to Tackett. Back out top to Bartley now. And knocked away in there by Salyer. Yeah, that's, that's a dangerous pass. Uh, that's a diagonal pass, but it was pretty well halfway across the court. And any time you come up with one of those, Johnson Central is going to pick it off or get a hand on it. You better put some mustard on a pass. That's right. Timeout. Pike, well, it's a 30. We'll stay right here with it. 48-47, Pikeville with the lead, 3.46 to play. And that becomes a chess match. Yes, it does. And you got players on both teams that's in foul trouble as far as uh, they got three fouls. They ain't nobody I don't think has four right now. No, but four. Let's see, yeah, I'll take that back. Uh, uh, Lauren Preston's on the bench for uh, Johnson. That's right, she's got four. four fouls. So, uh, 
You all got five team fouls for Johnson Central, so they've so, got two more to give before they get into the uh, one and one Fight Bill with eight team fouls, so Johnson Central's already into one and one Preston no longer on the bench. She just checked in. All three, four of the five starters out there for Fight Bill with three fouls out on the floor. And four of the, the five players is on the floor. Only one on the floor that's not got three fouls, Olivia Gerard. She, she's not been whistled for any. And she's had a tough matchup tonight against uh, Allie Mays. Oh, she's she, done a good she's job. She's done a good job, yeah. Pible with the ball. They get it into Nunamaker. Bartley, again, you got to make sure you get them crisp passes in this game. Yeah, and Johnson Central's going to that uh, half-court pressure. Nunamaker. And we're up jump ball. And it's going to go to Johnson Central. They got what they wanted. They come out for that half-court pressure, kept working Pipewell to the sideline, then trapped them in the corner and uh, forced the turnover. And it'll be Sawyer in the front court with it. Out front they go to Preston, back to Sawyer. Back to Preston. She'll back it back out. Ross at the free throw line. Back to Preston. Preston dribbles around the top. Spins at the elbow back to Fitch. Fitch with a little runner, no good. Rebound comes off to Stewart. Pipewell with another chance. They lead it 47-46. That was good defense that time by Pipeville. 250 to play in the ball game. Tack it. Puts it on the floor. Backs into the paint. Little turnaround shot. No good. Rebound comes off to Sawyer. She'll push it up the floor. Sawyer taking it all the way down. No, but she'll be fouled. I think that's going to go against Nunamaker. If it is, that's her four. It is. 2.34 to play. 47 for 48. 47. Pike will buy one. Sayer has not been to the foul line. Takes her time with it. First one is in and out. And they all be two shots for Johnson Central from here on yep. out, Charlie, as that's nine team fouls for Pikeville. Johnson Central still with only five. Castle checking back in for Johnson Central. Free throws good, and we're tied at 47 or 48. We're tied. We're tied. <laughs> it's hard to read this. We're hearing curtains coming over at one number. Yeah. Out top with it, Nunamaker. Kicks it into the corner. Gearhart for three. Go! Hey. Olivia Gearhart, five points here in the late in the fourth quarter, and her team's up by three. 51 48, Pikeville. And Gearhart, Gearhart with, with the, the steal, steal and, and a foul the tackle. on May. But that'll be a non-shooting foul. Yeah, that's only, only 16 the six, yeah. foul. But Pikeville will have possession with the lead. 2.07 left, Charlie. And they'll be in the bonus from here on out. Pike will in the bonus. Johnson Central will be in the double bonus. Pike will holding on to a three-point lead here. Tried to double team Nunamaker in the backcourt. Fires it back over to Tackett. And they're going to get a foul. And that's going to be the one and one. That foul's on Castle. That's her third. 17 fouls. So right now it comes very important. At the foul line, Pikeville struggled, Charlie, at the foul line. They're only 10 of 19. And let's see, uh, Tackett uh, is two of four from the foul line. So Tackett be shooting one and one. 51-48, Pikeville leading, 157 to play. Makes the first one. Now a two possession ball game. She had 11 points first half, Charlie. That's her first point here in the second half, but it's a big one. It comes at the right time for Pike, well, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. 157 left. That puts her team up before two possessions. Makes them both. 
57 to play. Heigl with the lead. Salyer brings it into the front court. Salyer driving into the lane, kicks it back out. There's a three. Nope. Way off. Rebound, though, by Preston. She drives, puts it in. Yeah. Timeout. Johnson Central, 53-50. Minute 40 to play. We'll be back in just a moment. Pike will leading on the Intermountain Sports Network. We're back at the Expo Center, 140 left in the ball game. It's 53-50. Pikeville over Johnson Central. Pikeville will have it as we return to actions. They'll have to bring it the length of the floor, Charlie. Yep, and you're going to be pressured. <laughs> Allie May, it's that rough position. She just fell down getting set for practice to guard somebody. Tripped over her own player's foot. Pike full trying to get in, get it in to tack it. And she throws it ahead to Bartley. Bartley going to take it all the way in, lays it up and in. Yeah, beautiful drive. Bartley's first point of the night. Oh, foul on Gearhart. And that's what you don't want. You got the five-point lead, and they're in the double bonus. Yeah, it looked like a little chicken wing by the offensive player, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, you don't, don't give the, the officials opportunity to call that. Well, that's right. And and Allie May. And, and don't sure put Allie May on the free throw. Right. 90% free throw shooter. Makes the first one. She has missed a couple tonight, but she's 12 of 14 right now. Makes them both. 13 of 15 from the foul line. Noonemaker picks up the ball, gets it back. They'll get it to Gearhart. She'll push it up the floor now. Looking back, gets it back to Noonemaker, back to Gearhart. Ball stolen. Allie May drives by, block, shot falls on the other side, though. Who was that, Preston? Preston. 55-54, one-point game now. One minute to go in the ball game. And Noonemaker will be fouled. Sayer will pick it up. That's going to be four on her. Larry, they may all make it. Huh? They may make it. But nobody found out in this game. 55 Maybe. seconds. Maybe. Got three players on the floor right now with four fouls. That's 18 fouls, so this will be the one and one. Nuna Maker, two of two from the foul line. She is a uh, very good foul yes, she shooter. Is. See if we can get it right real quick uh, before she uh, throws that up. Rachel Blackburn, 71% for the season. Free throw's good. Savannah Nuna Maker. I mean Nuna Maker. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep saying Blackburn. Yep. Preston checking back in quickly. Came out for one free throw. And let's see. Second one's good. I didn't think she could check back in until the clock started. I don't know. After Evidently so. Three-point lead. One possession game. Out front with it. Preston drives into the lane. She'll bring it back out. Backs it out again. Looking for help, gets it inside, and we got a timeout. Timeout, Johnson Central. Cost them a point, too, Larry. You're yes, right. It cost them a bucket. It's a 30 second timeout, 57 54, Pikeville with 36 seconds left. Johnson Central will have two timeouts left. Pikeville's got three. Johnson Central with 18 fouls, so they can foul one more time and put Pikeville at the line with the one and one. It'll be an interesting finish here down the stretch. It's a war. Yep. Awesome game. I mean, it's everything that the fans paid to come to see. They're, they're getting to see it tonight. We've had two pretty we've had two good ones to start the 15th region tournament tonight. Yes, we have. And it'll be Johnson Central with the basketball. Look for him to try to take it inside and uh, score and draw the foul. 
They've not attempted very many three-point uh, no. shots. They've only tried uh, four and only hit, and it hit two of them, but four is all they've tried. And they work, trying to get it inbounds. They get it into May in the corner. There's the three. Good. And we're tied at 57. 30 seconds left. Nunemaker, she's going to take it all the way to the rack, and she's going to be fouled by Fitch. And that's Fitch's third. Well, we said they hadn't tried very many of them, but they was two of four. Now they're three of five, and Allie May, she has not made a two-point bucket tonight, Charlie. She's got 19 points. She's got 13 from the foul line, and her other two made baskets is three-point shots. Well, that goes to show that Pipe will try to make her earn it when she takes it on the drive. Free throw good. Yep. Pipe will with a one-point lead, 58-57. New to make her five of five. 26 seconds, all we have left. One more free throw. Makes them both. Six of six from the foul line for 59-57. They get it in the hands of May. May back out top to Preston. Timeout. Johnson Central. 17 seconds left. We'll take a quick break here and we'll stay right here. I'm sorry, Larry. I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, we're looking for tonight's game brought to you by Howard Family Pharmacy, All Funeral Home, Citizens Bank of Kentucky, Microtech Security, Total Pharmacy, Intermountain Cable, Attorney John Earl Hunt, Coalfields Telephone, Community Trust Bank, Save a lot and Appalachian Wireless. Those fine folks are bringing you this excellent basketball game. Yes, they are. It's been a war. It was a war in the regular season when the, both these teams played. And Johnson Central was the winner of those games. But tonight, Pikeville has revenge on their mind. And right now, they're leading by two. Didn't look uh, very good for them about <coughs> midway through that third quarter. Johnson Central spurted out to a 10-point lead. But... Pikeville kept their poise and uh, kept fighting back and come back and now uh, they've got Johnson Central on the ropes right now with 17 seconds left and yep. trailing by two. Do you go for the tie, Charlie, or uh, they're three of five now from the three-point line or do you go for the win? I think you go with what they give you. How's that? Well, that's getting away from my answer. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, if you're fighting, well, do you make them take a three or do you let them work it down inside? That's what it boils down to. Right. Allie May will give it up, and they will take an 18-footer, and it's good, and we're tied at 59. Three seconds. Two. Nunamaker loses her balance, and it's the end of the regulation. Tied at 59 on the Intermountain Sports Network. And we're back at the Expo Center. This one's so good, Charlie, we're going to play extra minutes. That's right. Now, do you tip in overtime again? Yes, you That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. 59-59 at the end of regulation. Johnson Central with two big shots at the end of the game, a three-pointer by Allie May and a uh, two-point bucket for Ashley Belcher. Sandwiched around two free throws by Savannah Nunemaker, and we're going to play some more. Yep, we are. Now, what would you say about those players? They ain't nobody going to leave. Now, that's, that's, the bench might not be empty here for this one. Yeah, though. too many players left out there. Pikeville comes away with the possession. Tacky with it out to, New, or to uh, Gearhart. Gearhart brings it over on the left, brings it top of the key. She's going to drive into the lane. Little runner, good. Well, got that screen again. Nobody picked her up. They was looking for her to kick it in the corner to uh, Nunamaker, and she just floats up a little floater and, and uh, drops it down. Out top with it. They're working it. That's uh, Castle. Working it again. Driving down inside. Walk. We're going to get a walk. Yeah. Great defense that time by Rachel Blackburn. Coach Darren Rice, what well, he didn't agree with, but I thought it was an excellent call. 
61-59. Pike will chance to get a play going here. Got uh, Leslie Stewart way out on top. Yep, kind of maybe work on that pick and roll. I don't know. Yeah, Tackett almost had the five second count counted on her at there. You got to, uh, yep. they got to be aware of that. Noonamaker out front with it, over to Tackett. Tackett, a little, tried a little bit, you know, pick and roll there, and Noonamaker lucky to hold on to that when he gets it down into Blackburn. Noonamaker's five footer, good, and Pike will up by four, 63-59. Didn't look pretty, but it uh, looks good on the scoreboard, right? That's right. Pikeville on a 4-0 run to start this fourth quarter. They started the, I mean, the overtime, they started the fourth quarter on a 4-0 run also. Yep. Allie May goes down, loses it, goes out, out of bounds. bounds. Yep. Gearhart all over. It. Yeah, it's great pressure that time by Gearhart, and then Tackett picked her up as she got around Gearhart. Nunemaker will bring it up the floor. Into the front court with it. Attack it. And they throw it away. Yeah, you can't do that. Cross court pass. Yep. How many times have we said that? You know, you like I say, this team right here is so active defensively, you can't be lazy with a pass. Well, that's that's what they do. Three, no. Rebound, Gearhart. And they throw it away. And Gearhart, uh, she had the open court in front of her. She was trying to get it over to uh, Nunemaker. She could have brought it over into the front court. Yep. Minute 46 to go here in the overtime, 63-59, Pikeville. Pikeville, a young team, got a lot of freshmen playing out there, not been in this situation before, so it's going to be a full timeout. 146 left, Pikeville up before this year in the Mountain Sports Network. And we're back to the Expo Center, 146 left in overtime. Pikeville has come out and put a 4-0 run on right now. Johnson Central has not scored here in this overtime, Charlie. They'll have the ball as we return to action. And it'll be Sawyer throwing it inbounds. And Allie May will be touching it a lot. May puts it on the floor, puts up the runner, no good. Rebound, Stewart. And a good, and, great yep. defense by Gearhart. Yep. Kept her position, kept her hands up, didn't reach for it, and forced a missed shot. Tag it into the front court to Stewart. And back now to Nunamaker. Yeah, they need to get it off that side, now that corner. That's what Johnson Central wants to do. Right. Nunamaker driving in the lane, shot up, no good. Rebound comes off to Sawyer. She'll bring it up the floor. Sager going to take it all the way in, lays it in. Boy, beautiful shot. Timeout on the floor, 63-61, 106 to play. And it's another full timeout. We'll stay right here with it, Larry. And I'm telling you, it's been a heck of a ball game here. I'm telling you, uh, Pikeville clinging to a two-point lead right now, as you said, 63-61. Johnson Central with only one timeout left. Pikeville still got three. Both teams shooting the double bonus uh, on a foul, so uh, it just comes down to execution right now on the uh, part of the team and uh, going to the free throw line uh, maybe and making the free throws. Protect the basketball. Yeah. That's the main thing right now. You've got the lead. You protect the basketball, either get a good look or make them foul you. Right. 106 is not a long, it's a long time, but not a long time. Of course, uh, Johnson Central's going to come out and put pressure on uh, end to end. You know, they're going to come out, pick up full court, try to uh, create the turnover. Pikeville uh, has made the free throws so far, but uh, they've not been able to close Johnson Central out because they've not been able to stop Johnson Central on the offensive end. So, And they can run the baseline this time, right? Right, it's after a made bucket. Grace Bartley will step out of bounds for Pikeville to bring it in. And Charlie, see what we got. Absolutely. They get it into Nunamaker. I'm sitting there looking to double team her. Nunamaker takes it down the sideline, stays out of the double team. And there's going to be a foul called on Sawyer. And that's going to be her last. She's that's gone. That's right. 
She'll leave with five points. And looks like Castle coming in for her. No, that's Belcher, Ashley Belcher. Belcher's one to hit the big shot, put it in right. overtime. Under a minute to play now, minute 63-62, or 63-61. Double bonus. Both teams. Makes it. Nunamaker, seven of seven from the foul line, I think. Maybe nine of nine, I can't remember. Hey, she hasn't missed, I know no. that. That was a big uh, May curve because yep. the three-pointer only ties it up. This one to make a two-possession game, and she misses it. Here comes Allie May back the other way with 56 seconds left. You're hard on her, May, and we'll get a foul. And they're calling that on Gearhart. I don't see that. I thought she got picked yeah. off on the screen. May at the free throw line. That's Gearhart's second foul. And May makes, makes first, don't she? How many points? That's 20 points for her tonight. Yep. 14 of them come from the foul line. We'll take a break. 50 seconds left. 64 62 Pikeville on the Intermountain Sports Network. And we're back. 50 seconds left. First overtime. 64 62. Pike be with the lead. Allie May at the line. For Johnson Central, she'll have one free throw, Charlie. Making it a one-point game right here with 50 seconds left. And she missed it. Rebound to Stewart. Nunamaker bringing the ball to the floor. Nunamaker trapped in the backcourt, gives it up to Stewart. And tack it. And they didn't. Tack it drives all the way down, shot no good. Rebound put back up and in by Nunamaker. 66-62. Kelsey Joe Tackett picks up the foul. Her four. Allie May with the uh, elbow on that. Of course, Tackett jumped in front of her, but uh, she had that elbow extended. Free throw's good. She can cut the lead to two. 27 seconds left. I'm out fighting. We'll keep you right here as it's a three-point ball game, 66-63. 27 at, seconds left in the overtime. At least both teams now with one timeout left, Charlie. Yeah, they saved them to the overtime. They still ain't going to take them home with them, though. They still ain't. They'll be using them 27 seconds. 27 seconds. It's going to be a long 27 seconds. Well, you know, uh, if May makes this one, Pikeville still with the two-point lead. So if Johnson Central don't uh, come up with the steal, forces Pikeville at the foul line, if they knock both of them down, that'll be a two-possession game. Right. If they make one of two, it'll be a uh, three or one one-possession game. The three-pointer can tie it. We've right. seen that so far. Oh yeah. So a lot of strategy going on right now on the sidelines. Both teams, like I say, one timeout left. 27 seconds, a lot of time in a basketball game at this point. It is. And, wa and waiting in the wings for this one is Pike Central. Of course, uh, it'll be, uh, they get a, be a day of rest in between, uh, but. Uh, two days. Two, yes, two days, right. Free throw is up, and it's short. Rebound, though, put back up, and in by Fitch. And it's a one-point yep. game. Changes everything there, doesn't it? It does. Here's still Bartley. We've got a timeout called by Pikeville. And that's and their last. That's it. And it'll be 16.9 seconds. That's a big rebound. Yeah, it was. On a missed free throw, you know, and uh, game on the line, you, you've got to block out your man and come up with that rebound. 
Now they're now you say clinging to that one point lead. Yes, they are. Yeah, all right now if you're Johnson Central, you got to figure out who you're going to foul if you don't get the steal, and you know who they don't want to foul. Well, you know if they don't get that steal, sometimes with the clock running down, you don't have a choice. You just well, foul true. whoever you can. You know, whoever who's got the ball. But you want to make sure Newtonmaker's not going to get an easy inbounds pass. Let's see, uh, Pikeville, uh, uh, re, uh, free throw shooting, uh, Grace Bartley, uh, 78%. Uh, Rachel Blackburn, 71%. Olivia Gearhart, 67%. Nunamaker, 75%. And Stewart, 68%. So all five players, let's see, Kelty Joe Tackett, she's out there. Uh, she's 50% free throw shooter. So she's the worst free throw shooter on the season, but Kelsey Joe has done pretty good tonight. Here we go. And they throw it in bounds to Nunamaker. Nunamaker bringing it up the court and she's gonna be fouled. That's number 10, Central, Sykes. 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 Blackburn checking into the ball game. <laughs> there she is. <clears throat> Nunamaker, one of two, the last trip up there. Yes, sir. That's our only miss tonight. Two shots. First one's good. But it only still remains a one possession ball game. She makes them both. Yeah, it'll force, force Johnson Central to shoot a three point shot. And Allie May has hit uh, two of three from that range, so they might want to try to force somebody else. Yep. And Allie May will have the ball. And they're going to try for the one, and there's going to be a foul. That's a good foul. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Stewart, uh, that's her fourth foul, but she was making sure that she didn't get the and one on that one. Of course, now, very important to get that block out on a missed free throw. Of course, uh, she'll have two. First free throw up and good. 68-66, two-point game, 7.9 seconds. Fitch come away with the missed free throw the last time against Blackburn over here. And makes them both. Not a missed free throw that time, are they? 68-67. So Grace Bartley's coming in for Rachel Blackburn. Might want to get it in to Nunamaker again. And we got a tie up and it will go to Johnson, Johnson Central. Central. Four point five seconds left in overtime. Blackburn checking back in. Johnson Central have the ball. And they're going to take a timeout, and that's going to be their last. Four point five seconds. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot. May see fight will make call. Well, they're out of timeouts. Yeah. So yeah, they're out of timeouts, or or uh, Nunamaker could have called one when right. she went to the floor. And, if, and, and Johnson Central done what they wanted to do, Charlie. They got the two free throws down, then they forced Pottville to throw it in in the corner. See, what they do is on that press, they cover the center of the floor and leave that corner open. So when the players go to the corner and get the inbound pass, then they double team them. I to figure out exactly where they're going to throw the ball inbounds down here. Coach, coaching. Be right there on the baseline. Coaches both right now trying to figure out how to defend and then how to run the offensive set out of it. Well, they're, they're going to get it in to Allie May, and Allie May's going to take it to the bucket. That's, that's, that's a good That's a good. Call. That, that's what they're going to try to do now. Pikeville probably knows the same thing, so, uh, you know, uh, they're going to try to keep that from happening. And you can't foul Allie May. Of course, you got uh, you got Fitch in the game right now. It's got 14 points. You also got Lauren Preston into the game. She's got 14 points, so they have more than they one option. Options. You're right. Preston will throw the ball inbounds. And you could look to see Preston throw it in and then turn, get, it, uh, back, get right. it back real quick. Sites on the drive, shots up and in. And Johnson Central wins it. 
67 in overtime. Wow, what a game, Charlie, what a game. Not the, uh, not, not what you expected, and she won't be able to get in the lane and put it away. I mean, they just did what they had to do. We'll take a break, and we'll be back in a few minutes as Johnson Central wins at 69-68 on the Intermountain Sports Network. Back to the East Kentucky Expo Center, 69-68 in overtime in a battle that started with the opening tip and ended at the last whistle. Yes, it did, Charlie. Uh, looking the, uh, down at the stats here, it was tied 10 times, had 10 lead changes, and the last lead change was with no time on the clock as the ball went through the basket, and Johnson Central comes away with the one-point win. For Pikeville, they were led in scoring tonight by Savannah Nudemaker with 23 points, 14 points for Kelty Joe Tackett, two points for Rachel Blackburn, Grace Bartley with two points, six points for Leslie Stewart, nine points for Olivia Gearhart, had uh, two points for Jaden Edmonds, two for Alexa Wilkerson, and eight for Kirsten Cole. Pikeville, 21 of 48 from the field for 43%. 5 of 14 from three-point land for 35%. 21 of 31 from the foul line for 67%. They had nine assists, 19 turnovers, four blocks, and seven steals. For Johnson Central, they were led in scoring tonight by Ellie May with 23. May was only two of 11 from the field, Charlie. Two of uh, those two buckets was from the three-point line. She has two of four, but she was 17 of 21 from the foul line. 14 points for Lauren Preston and also Hannah Fitch. Five points for Lauren uh, Salyer. Elena Castle with one. Cheyenne Ross scored two points. Six points for Sammy Seitz, but none no bigger than that last one that gave the Johnson Central Lady Eagles the win. Ashley Belcher with four. Johnson Central was 22 of 49 from the field for 44%. They were 3 of 6 from three-point line, 50%. 22 of 34 from the foul line uh, for 64%. They won the rebounding battle, 37 to 34. They had nine assists, 17 turnovers, three uh, blocks. They had 14 steals, Charlie. Fast break points, 14 to 8, Johnson Central, 20 to 18 points off of turnover, Johnson Central, points in the paint, 32-26, Johnson Central, second chance points was tied even at nine apiece. Johnson Central comes away with the big overtime win, 69-68, and they will uh, meet uh, Pike Central, let's see, and that will be, what, Friday, Friday night, night. Mm -hmm. in, the in, the, in the first semifinal game here. What a ball game. You look at the numbers, they're just about even all the way down through it, as does this game from start to finish. Pike will, should hold her heads up and be proud of the game they played. It was a heck of a ball game. And Johnson Central will move on. It's survive in advance. 69-68, Johnson Central. That'll wrap it up for us here at the East Kentucky Expo Center for Eli Back to Radio Station. For Wayne Fugit on camera, my partner Larry Cecil. This is Charlie Pinson. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Intermountain Sports Network.